we're going to talk about spectral analysis of the system and spectra and get in a viscoelastic string and of their synchronization. Please. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm afraid that uh, the topic I'm going to talk is not properly a topic uh, which pertains to relative mechanics, but some say that uh, in every conference there should be a talk which is a off topic, and probably this is the most off topic of the entire conference. However, since it concerns dissipation, in some sense it might be related. So, um, Perhaps the best way to start is to show some uh, uh, a couple of uh, videos very quickly. So this is just uh, YouTube is playing of this of this simulation. Uh, uh, so this is a number of uh, pendula which hang from a metallic cable. And they have a interesting, nice dynamics with, of course, patterns which tend to repeat. Now, it's, a, sorry, it's accelerated, so in real reality, it's a more beautiful than this one. And uh, when uh, instead of having a bunch of pendulum, so now you see it's going back to something which seems pretty ordered. And uh, um, here is another example with just a couple of pendula. And uh, so I will just show a few seconds, uh, a few seconds of the video. Um, you see, in this case, uh, the behavior is just uh, there are beats in which one of the pendula stops, uh, the other starts handling and they can picture. Uh, if you let the video go, the uh, speaker, who is a professor of physics, would say that, well, we we'll speak about uh, magicians, which show these behaviors, and uh, we we'll say, well, it's just the law of physics, uh, and uh, well, the energy is transferred from one to the other. So the uh, question is, uh, um, uh, we'd like to understand uh, the type of uh, patterns which emerge in these uh, situations. So uh, this is the system. Uh, we have an elastic string, which uh, is, uh, um, sorry, just a second. Slide. So this is the type of system we're going to study. There is a cable with a, a number of pendula hanging from it, and there are these beautiful, fascinating, long-time behaviors in which there emerge various types of patterns, which uh, in some cases, when there are just a few of them, it's uh, normal it's, uh, to, to, to consider synchronization. <laughs> so for instance, they could be synchronized in phase, or they be synchronized out of phase or having beats. And of course, if there are plenty of them, there are a number of behaviors. So the mechanism of the, in an elementary way, it's easy to understand. There is dissipation. And uh, since there is dissipation, the amplitudes of the pendula become small. And at some point, a regime of uh, a linear regime, a regime of small oscillations becomes meaningful. And so a linear analysis is certainly possible as first point to start for this for the comprehension of these cycles. So uh, the second element is that if the dissipation depends on the frequency of the oscillations, then the different normal modes will be done in different ways, and on a long time, only some of the normal modes will, will persist. So what we see after a tangent is just that, that the normal mode or the few normal modes or those normal modes which dissipate less. And uh, of course, then you may have a combination of superposition of normal modes, which means either periodic or quasi-periodic dynamics. So in an elementary way, the mechanism is very clear. 
The point, however, is to uh, try to understand the spectrum of uh, this type of system. So the spectrum of uh, coupled to string pendular systems with the dissipation. So what we need is that uh, model for the string pendular system. These are hybrid systems, continuum, continuous, continuous, continuous string and the discrete system, the pendulum, and a model for the dissipation. Now the dissipation in this case is uh, um, dissipation which is uh, uh, internal to the string. So which type of dissipations can, can we consider in, 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 in a stream? So this is a, the, 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 the a very great stream. So first of all, let me uh, say how we model the system, the first part of the model of the hybrid system, and then the models for the dissipation. So we consider a string, it's just an elastic string, so there is no linearity, there is no non-linearity here. Fixed extremities, fixed the length, and the string may oscillate, basically may oscillate vertical. So it is it's described by an embedding, we may use the X coordinates to fix the point in the string, and then we have to say the horizontal H and vertical V position of the point of the string, of the points of coordinate X. Okay, and then there are fixed bounded conditions at the extremities. And then we hang N pendular, and pendula. they're all supposed to be equal, they're equally spaced. Here I just brought, draw, drew two of them. So uh, we assume that the pendula move in a horizontal, in a vertical plane. Okay, so this is a constraint we put. Um, but the suspension point may move because it's attached to the string. It may move this way, in this way. So uh, phi one, the phi's are the angles that the, of the pendulum with the vertical. Okay. Uh, so then the position of the pendulum at a given time depends also on the position on the on the configuration of the string. And this is the mechanism which realizes the coupling between the two uh, systems. So we write the how. We need to write the equations of motion. So there is the uh, the conservative part of the equations of motion that we write as a, a Lagrangian. I forgot saying that this is a joint work with Sarah Galasso, a almost former PhD student of uh, mine, and Antonio Pono, who is a colleague of a number of you probably know. Um, Okay, so we write the Lagrangian of the system. The Lagrangian is uh, kinetic energy minus potential energy. The kinetic energy is the kinetic energy of the stream plus the kinetic energy of the pendulum. And the potential energy is the potential energy of the weight, of the weight force, and the potential energy of the elastic force, of the elastic tension, of the elastic, due to the elasticity of the, of the, of the uh, stream. And now the expression are not important, are not important, it's just you write them as integrals, of the deformations and so on, and they can be written as uh, the integral of a uh, Lagrangian density, which is this uh, uh, script L, this one. And now the only reason why I wrote it, you see here there is the kinetic energy of the string, the, the tension of the string, the weight of the string, and then the contribution of the pendula, and there are, of course, delta B, right? Because we are the, 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 the pendulum are hanged to one single point. So this means that in, in this type of problems there will be some non-classical solutions, of course. Now, dissipation. This is, in a way, the most interesting part. Which models of dissipation can we make? Well, there are a number of models for dissipation, but basically there are two different ones. If you think of the dissipation due to the air, so this is written is the dissipation due to the air. It's called viscous dissipation uh, for a for a for a for a string. Here there are no pendulums, so there is the wave equation and then a contribution which goes with the time derivative, the velocity. The characteristic of this dissipation is that the spectrum is made of a finite number of eigenvalues on the real axis and then an infinite number of eigenvalues which are complex and which are a fixed, or they all have the same real parts. So the real part of the eigenvalue is the gives the dissipation, and therefore if we put the string in the air, or just think of the dissipation of the air, that does not introduce a frequency-dependent dissipation. Instead, is the dissipation is 
determinant to the string, which is some type of viscoelastic behavior, uh, which produces a, a, a time dependent dissipation. And uh, um, so, a standard model for dissipation is what is called the Kelvin Five uh, model. Um, and uh, if for a, for, a, for a string, introduces a terms which is proportional to the derivative Txx, okay, of the of the of the uh, string deformation. Uh, so this is the viscoelastic string or the Kelvin Foyt string, as I will call it later on. Uh, now the spectrum has the structure. There are infinitely many eigenvalues on the real axis. They accum accumulate to minus infinity, and then they accumulate to minus, here I've written minus one over mu, but is one over gamma, where gamma is the strength of the dissipation. Okay. So when the dissipation gamma goes to zero, this point moves to minus infinity. And then there are a finite number of, eigenval of eigenvalues on uh, the circle centering this point minus one over nu and of radius one over nu. And now you see that in this case, these are the, the most interesting eigenvalues. The real paths depends on the frequency and those which dissipate less are those which have uh, uh, are, are these ones, okay? And in particular, you see that the higher the frequency here, the higher the dissipation. So this is the starting point for the analysis of the system. And in a way, uh, the, what we will try to see is to look at the spectrum of the string with the pendulum as a modification, as a deformation of this Kelvin Foyt spectrum. So this is really the starting point, okay? So infinitely many eigenvalues on the real line, they dissipate very quickly, no oscillations, and then a finite number of eigenvalues in the complex plane, which lie on the circle. So now uh, one should may think that uh, when nu goes to zero, when gamma goes to zero, so when gamma goes to zero, this spectrum should tend to the spectrum of the vibrating string. string. The spectrum of the vibrating string is on the, on the, on the uh, imaginary axis of the equally spaced eigenvalues here. So when the nu or gamma, sorry, match the two uh, symbols, when the dissipation goes to zero, this spectrum here should become this one. And it's not completely clear if this limit is uh, continuous in the plane. However, if you look at it in the Riemann sphere, namely in the, take the sphere, uh, and uh, uh, we identify the points in the plane with the, with the uh, stereographic projections, then here is the plane. You see a real a part, a real part of, uh, of lambda, imaginary of lambda. Here there are the imaginary eigenvalues. Of, the blue ones are the eigenvalues of the of the string. So they move. The, 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 the imaginary axis is this uh, in the in the sphere. Is this circle here? They accumulate at my at uh, infinity here. Okay, and. Uh, this is the circle, the green circle is uh, this one. And uh, now you see that the, 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 in, in the Riemann sphere, the circle, of course, circles in the plane, but circles in the sphere. And uh, when the nu goes to zero, this point moves to infinity, the circle becomes larger, and uh, the corresponding circle in the sphere moves toward the imaginary axis and uh, the uh, we, we have your there is completely is uh, continuous. I mean, the point minus one over nu, when nu goes to zero, moves to infinity. So there is in fact continuity in new, in, uh, in the dissipation parameter, even though it's not clear at first. However, the point is that in order to understand the dynamics of the string with the pendulum, we will not look at the dependence on the dissipation parameter nu, but we will look at the uh, uh, the dependence on the mass of the pendula. Okay, that will be the thing which will allow us to understand. So now we write the equations of motion at the other Lagrange equations for the previous Lagrangian with this Kelvin Foyt dissipation. So we add to the equations for the string, the horizontal H and vertical components of the deformation terms, which are uh, proportional to the 
derivative Txx. Okay, and we put the dissipation on both of them. Then we make a rescale. Now, the only important thing is that the new parameters are mu, which is the ratio of the mass of the pendula over the mass of the string. So mu large means very heavy pendula. And then there is nu, which is uh, gamma. In fact, I missed up, mixed the, the, mixed them up since the beginning. And then there is this uh, new parameter alpha, which is the ratio between them the frequency of the small oscillations of the pendulum and the fundamental frequency of the string. Okay, so the, 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 everything depends on these three parameters. These are the equations of motion. There are the equations for the pendulum and equations for the pendulum, a partial differential equations for the horizontal and a partial differential equation for the vertical components. They are nonlinear and they contain Dirac. Delta Dirac. Here, I just wrote them to show the presence of the Delta Dirac, and then there are the boundary conditions. Uh, so, if you neglect uh, the the on, on the on the temporal. Yes, I, I'm not considering the friction in the air because it's. Uh, okay, it is negative. No, well, probably. I mean, all this started from the. In fact, that I observed an experiment by, the, by some colleagues in Bergamo in which they had 16, um, 16 pendula hanging from a cable. They were half of a kilo each one. So I saw that the dependence of the friction of the air was negligible in this case. And in any way, it's not selective on the frequency, which is what, what, what we instead we are interested to, because we want to see which are the modes which persist on the long term. Okay, so we, there is an equilibrium solution. Everything is uh, at rest. The pendulum hang vertically. Uh, the string configuration is not C1. There are discontinuities of the first derivatives at the suspension points. We linearize, and the linearization decouples into two systems. There is a system for the vertical displacement and a system for the horizontal displacement and for, and for the angular for, and for the pendula. And you can understand that because when you linearize, basically you linearize the pendulum because the string is linear. So if this is the angle phi, you see the horizontal displacement is order phi, but the vertical displacement is order of phi square. And therefore it does not appear in the linearization. So the vertical component the vertical system describes a viscoelastic string which some mass points attached to it. Okay. When there is no friction, so these equations without the friction is a well-known system, was considered by, by Lord Rayleigh at the beginning of the 20th century, and uh, it describes a string with a number of tips of points. Uh, so the case uh, no dissipation, and this one was already known. Instead, the other one describes a string with a number of uh, harmonic oscillations attached. So these are basic to basic systems in the theory of uh, strings coupled with uh, uh, with uh, with something. Okay. Uh, so what we do is to start the spectrum of this system. So uh, I will call spectrum of V vertical, the spectrum of the vertical subsystem, spectrum H, the spectrum of the horizontal subsystem. The vertical one depends only on the parameter mu and mu, and the horizontal one on alpha mu and mu. Okay. And then, of course, we need some type of weak notion for the solution, but it's all classical. You just take C2 functions, except that the suspension point where the first derivative should be functional. Okay, just one remark. If there is no dissipation, then all the eigenvalues of a real part equal zero. If there is dissipation, all the eigenvalues of a real part negative. And this is understandable. So, first thing is, which are the eigenvalues? It is possible to give a, a, a closed formulas for the equations which determine the eigenvalues for any number of the, of the pendula vertical system, horizontal system. So lambda is a lambda is a eigenvalue, say a vertical eigenvalue, if and only if either it is a zero of this uh, green factor, the hyperbolic sign of uh, this function C nu of lambda, which is pi lambda divided by the square root express, or a zero of this other one. In here, you end up the Chebyshev polynomial of the second type. 
For the horizontal part, it's similar except that uh, zero, the diagonal point of the Chevich's polynomial is uh, more uh, as an, an additional term, and this makes the problem much more complicated and much more interesting. The case, first case with the new equals zero is uh, no, is a ray based case. So the first thing is what are the green factors? So this is intuitively very clear. The pendulum are equally spaced. So think of the eigenfunction of the vibrating string with no pendulum, which has nodes at the position of the pendulum. The suspension points of the pendulum stay still. The pendulum may stay still. So all those eigenvalues and eigenfunctions in which only the string oscillate, that I will call pure string eigenvalues, see the pendulum, the mass points are fixed at the nodes, this will persist to the pendulum, to the spectrum of the coupled system. So there are these pure string eigenvalues in which only the string oscillate. The, their interest is that they have an organizing uh, effect role on the spectrum, as, as we will see. In the other uh, eigenvalues, which are the zeros of these complicated functions, instead, both the pendulum and the string uh, oscillate. Both. So we will call them string pendula eigenvalues, string and pendula oscillate. OK, um, so what we are going to do is to try to understand the structure of this spectra focusing on their dependence on mu, which is the mass of the pendulum. Okay, for mu equals zero, when there are no masses, no pendulum, we have the Kelvin fold string. <laughs> we have the Kelvin fold string. Okay, so when mu is zero, the vertical and the horizontal spectrum coincides with the Kelvin Floyd string is the spectrum, which is the one with the circle. And of course, if there is no dissipation, we need the spectrum of the vibrating string. Okay, so what can we find? Okay, for the vertical system, it's possible and not, not, too much, not too difficult to give a complete analytical description of the spectrum. So let me distinguish the case mu equals zero, no dissipation from the case of dissipation. So when there is dissipation, okay, here on the left, there is the spectrum of the, uh, the, the vertical spectrum when mu is zero and there is no dissipation, which is the spectrum of the, of the, of the, of the vibrating string. So of course, the eigenvalues are complex conjugates, so there are pairs of them. And then you see um, the, the, those which are marked uh, with bigger dots are the pure, pure string eigenvalues, those which have nodes at the suspension points of them. Okay, when we increase mu, the pure string eigenvalue remain fixed. All others move down towards one of them. Okay, or to zero. So the spectrum for mu positive is just a deformation, a continuous, actually a smooth deformation of that for mu equals zero, of that of the. Okay, when there is dissipation, it happens the same thing. Um, but starting from the Kelvin Floyd spectrum. So this is the Kelvin Floyd spectrum, dissipation, but no pendulum, mu is zero. They are organized in this way. These are the pure string eigenvalues, okay, those in which the pendulum do not move. When I increase mu, all these eigenvalues move towards the one of the, 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 the So it's very simple. Uh, just a Deformation. Instead, the uh, spectrum of the horizontal system is much more complicated and richer. First of all, the basic difficulty is that there is this term here, because you see in the vertical case, uh, if mu is zero, if there is no dissipation, so we have the, 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 the pendulum. If mu is zero, C, this function is just lambda. So the difference between the case mu equals zero and mu positive 
is that when u is positive, the solution, the, the C, which are solutions of the systems, are eigenvalues of the vibrating string. And therefore, we may determine the values of lambda just because we know which are the Xs, okay? Because they are the solutions for nu equals zero. Instead, in the, this uh, symmetry is broken when the, there is the, the, in the horizontal case. So the situation is much, is more complicated. We can say something analytical then have to resort to numerical analysis. Uh, so the analytically, there are certain things which can be said. Of course, all pure string eigenvalues belong to the spectrum because they are there. And then there are infinitely many real eigenvalues which uh, accumulate to minus infinity and to minus one over mu. And then, at least for small mu, this is the analytic uh, statement, there are continuations, so continuous or even smooth continuations, which depend on mu, on the mass of each eigenvalue of the Kelvin void spectrum. Okay, so this is shown in this way. This is the spectrum of the Kelvin Foyt string, so the string without the pendulum. When I turn on the mass of the pendulum, theorem, each I, the, the pure string eigenvalues, the big one, the red ones, remain fixed. The other move along curves. Okay, these curves are smooth, except if you if a pair of eigenvalues are like this one then it goes out of the real axis. So they're just they move along. And then there are n distinct mu continuations of these two values, i alpha and minus i alpha, which do not belong to the Kelvin point spectrum. And their meaning is this one. So when mu goes to zero, the pendula are very, very light. And you may imagine that each pendulum may move, may oscillate by itself without forcing the string to move and without forcing the other pendulum to move. So this limit here is just the limit in which the pendulum of zero, each pendulum of zero masses, or mass makes an oscillations. Out of these come out n continuations in the horizontal spectrum. Okay, so this is what we can say analytically. And now we can make a very uh, careful, attentive, uh, numerical analysis to understand the structure, the global structure of the horizontal spectrum. So what the, this numerical uh, the numeric shows is that, first of all, the new, all the new continuations I described are global. So they're continuous, there are these continuous, actually smooth curves for all mu positive, not just for small mu. Second, there are no other eigenvalues besides those in these continuations that I have described. Uh, this means that uh, you see the horizontal spectrum for large, for positive mu, can be thought of as a continuation of a string without the pendula and the pendula without the string, because I alpha minus I alpha are exactly the situation in which there are just the, 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 the pendula, they do not put the string. So in a way, it's a continuation of these two extreme cases, the string without the pendula, the pendula and the pendula without the string. And then it's interesting to look at the limit for mu, mu which goes to plus infinity of all these uh, continuations. So, what happens is this, n, exactly n of these new continuations go to zero. Exactly n of these new continuations go to infinity and go to infinity in a very peculiar way along a line which is uh, universal. It does not depend on anything, on n, on the, on new, on anything. All others, others, uh, in groups of n, there, is a, there, there are band structures, tend to one pure string eigenvalue. So here are a simulation. The lines are the path of the continuation up to a certain value of mu. 
So here, mu goes from 0 to 0 0.05. Of course, if the value should get the parameter 6, mu here arrives to 0 0.13. You see that these lines uh, becomes longer, 0 0.25. It becomes even longer, and so on. So what you can see is that there are these eigenvalues coming out of the circle and coming out of plus minus i alpha. They, for mu, which becomes large, they either tend to one of the Q string eigenvalue, as I said, or to zero. I will show you now in the next picture something which goes to zero here is not visible, or there are these any eigenvalues which go to infinity. And uh, this is quite interesting and completely unexpected to us because this means you see here lambda becomes very large, so the frequency becomes extremely fast, the real part becomes extremely fast, and there are oscillations. So a string with very heavy pendula. If you look at the eigenfunctions, the pendula stay almost exactly on the vertical plane in this here, and the, the string oscillates. But it oscillates very quickly and dissipates very quickly. So it's like a, something which takes out energy in a way which is uh, completely surprising uh, to me. So here you can see there are. Uh, uh, these uh, complicated reconnections of the different bands. Here, uh, okay, and now the, the, if you want to look at the synchronization, we have to ask which are the eigenvalues which dissipate less. Okay, and now why for the Kelvin fault spending? It's very simple. Those which are on the. in the circle. Here is much more complicated. It depends in a complicated way on the parameter. So here I show the picture, some pictures for n equal to to pendulum, and then you see, and I increase mu. Uh, you have to think for the value of mu, which is indicated, the final point, the last point, the end point of the, of the of this path is the eigenvalue. So here you see for moderate values of mu, small masses, there is one which dissipates less, and then another one. You have to look at the real path. And then when mu increases, you see they become closer. But now we have two, two eigenvalues which are closed. So here there will be just the asymptotic on a long time will be the eigenfunction of this one, which will be an eigenfunction like this. But here we will have bits because there are two, two, two eigenvalues, two, 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 eigen, two eigenvalues which are closed. Here they remain closed. Here is a different situation. And then you see. Again, just one, and now two, but the two which connect are not, not anymore the two which comes from my alpha, but one of those which comes from the Kelvin Foyt spectrum, and then one of the two becomes smaller and so on. So uh, this means that in principle, it is possible to understand which are the modes which uh, uh, will be seen for the longest time. I mean, the average persists longer. Of course, you need to compute the eigenvalues, the eigenfunctions, but you can give explicit formulas for the amplitudes of the pendula and for the shape of the string and understand, for instance, here there are some examples. In, uh, you see, in, in, in an eigenfunction like this one, the pendula oscillates in phase. In a one like this, they oscillate out of phase. Uh, uh, and so in, in this one, they stay still, which is a few string. And so eventually, you, you can look at the dependence of the asymptotic state on the parameters. Uh, so and this is the conclusion, which is just a numerical integration for n equal to. Uh, so we have two parameters, which are uh, alpha and mu. Mu is fixed, is uh, very small. Mu, and depending on the values of alpha and mu, there is a, the, the, the eigenvalue which dissipates less. It's different, and this means that the eigenfunction is different. So plus plus means that they, it's uh, out in phase, plus minus out of phase, and, and so on. And uh, so you may have situations in which there are bits, uh, bits uh, in phase synchronization, quasi periodicity, and so on. So let me, if I still one minute, uh, say what. Uh, uh, can be said besides this. Of course, this is just in a way at the beginning, or the beginning of a study. So, open questions in future work. First of all, you should make uh, in a more systematic way 
understand the synchronization and uh, make examples for n larger than two because that becomes richer. The situation becomes richer. And then, uh, of course, we should say something about the nonlinear system, and this is very interesting. Uh, because, of course, the analysis made on normal modes cannot be made, but normal modes could be replaced by stable manifolds. And uh, therefore, one can prove that um, uh, there are, uh, asymptotically, the motions tend to one of these uh, stable manifolds in which the dynamics would be close to that of the uh, normal modes. Of course, all these we would require a proper width formulation, which is what scares you more. And uh, one could change the continuum, for instance, take a solid bar instead of a spring, and then do the last step, which is uh, replacing the pendula with, say, clocks, and uh, trying to do a proper uh, treatment for uh, what is called the hyphens. A synchrony pendular synchronization, which is very famous and which has never been studied in a continuum dissipating, a continuum coupling between the two pendulums, just putting systems of a spring and so finite dimensional coupling. So this is. Just a